When talking about developmental theories, there are three kind of major types of developmental theories. You have life course, latent trait, and trajectories. So life course is what we're going to be talking about in this video. Um, and so life course theories are basically the idea where criminality is a dynamic thing. It is not static. Um, it's constantly changing and it's influenced by individual characteristics, by traits, and by social experiences. So let's talk about some of the life course theories. So the, so the life course concepts in general. Um, so this idea of changing life influences. Um, so if you have a disruption in a major transition point, um, one of the life course um, concepts is this idea that that can be a majorly destructive factor. So if something, if you have a major life transition and it doesn't go well, um, then this can promote criminality. Um, and so people are influenced also um, by different factors as they mature and then this affects your behavior. So for example, in childhood, your parents are by far the most important influence. Um, once you hit um, adolescence, then it becomes all about your peers as, are the most important. And then in adulthood, um, probably your career and marital factors are gonna be more important. So your life is, just, is not always the same in terms of who has an influence on you. Uh, so factors then that are relevant to crime at one point in life may not be relevant at another. But it is important that sort of if you have a major transition, so um, maybe transitioning from um, childhood into adolescence um, or, you know, some specific thing like like moving or the death of somebody um, in your family or something like that. If there's a major transition like that and it it's not there, it's not done well, um, then that can cause some major problems and promote criminality. But in general, when we're talking about life course concepts. It's that idea that it's not always the same people who are going to influence us as we grow and as we change um, within our life. There are different people who who will become the most important in determining how, how we behave. So um, once you're an adult, um, you know what your friends think of you. It's not that big of a deal anymore if they don't think that what I'm doing is good or they don't like me for whatever reason, then it's like, whatever, I don't need them. But when you're an adolescent, that's a pretty important um, influence in your life. So things change as you mature. Um, so another so, sort of some other specific life course concepts, um, one of them is what's called problem behavior syndrome. Um, this is the idea that crime is one of many antisocial behaviors that kind of cluster together. Um, and problem behaviors, they, they tend to co-occur. So the more problems in somebody's life, then the more problems that are attracted to that person and um, kind of the, the more problems that they're going to have. So these would be things like, um, you know, family dysfunction, um, sexual and physical abuse, substance abuse, smoking, um, precocious sexuality, early pregnancy, educational underachievement, suicide attempts, uh, sensation seeking, unemployment. So things like that, the more of those problems or things like that that exist in a person's life, the more additional problems they're gonna cause. So if you have something like um, you're, you, you had problems in school and you know, so then that caused you to act out, that caused you to skip class. And then when you skip class, you went and you were, you started smoking and then that, then maybe you then, um, you also then started doing um, other kinds of drugs um, or using alcohol. And then that led to you basically failing out of school. Then that leads to you uh, having, um, not being able to get a good job. And then now you're living in poverty. And, and, um, and so then maybe then that also leads to depression and, you know, substance dependence and, um, and then sort of the more problems that you have, the more problems that those are going to cause. And that's kind of the idea of problem behavior syndrome. And so, and then crime and committing crimes become one problem or behavior that exists amongst all these other problematic behaviors and all these other things that have happened in somebody's life. So problem behavior syndrome is basically problems beget more problems. Um, so, Age of onset is another important um, life course concept in the sense that um, early onset of deviance strongly predicts later and more serious criminality. Um, the earlier the onset, the longer and more serious the criminal career will be. Um, and this is definitely supported in a lot of research that shows sort of, so the, the people that like as, as kids, 
um, are, are doing things like, um, you know, fire setting and they're bullies. Um, maybe they're actually, they're also sort of going a step further and, you know, committing acts of sexual deviance when we're, we're talking like really young ages, like eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. If you're doing things like that in those age ranges, then those people, we're not saying that, it's not to say that they are like beyond help, obviously. Those are very at-risk children that should be receiving a lot of attention um, for, by various institutions and their family. Uh, but those people are far more likely to then have a longer criminal career, be more deviant in adolescence, more so than your typical adolescents, um, and sort of that continue into adulthood. And they are the ones also that have the more serious criminal offending. Um, so if you start earlier, then your the criminal career is not only going to be longer, but also have more of the serious offending. Um, so things like violence and sexual crimes and things like that. Um, so then desistance is sort of another thing. This is um, desistance being uh, when people stop committing crimes. Um, and this is a slow process. Desistance is not something that's just, oh, I'm desisting now. That's not quite how it works. It involves changing the mindset and the identity of the offender so that they no longer consider themselves an offender. They change their thinking from being a, a current offender to an ex-offender or an ex-con. Um, and so that's a really gradual process. Change has to come from within to be effective and to be permanent. And so the offender has to decide that they are not a bad person, they have just done bad things in the past, and they don't need to do those things anymore. Um, they have to work towards change kind of one situation at a time. So it kind of starts the overall process. It starts with this like general readiness to change. So they're like, you know what? In it being in and out of prison is not a fun lifestyle. I don't think I want to do this anymore. I don't want to run from the cops anymore. I think I need to change my life. So it starts with that idea that they want to change. And so then they encounter one or more environmental hook is what it's called. And this is a positive life experience. So somebody saying, you know, I believe in you could be a hook or, you know, having a child, major hook or getting married or something like that. I'm um, getting a good job, um, anything like that, where it's a positive life experience. And it could be anything from somebody saying something nice to you to, to having a baby or getting a new job and anything in between. Anything that's a positive, you know, it's, it's like a, it's it's like a, a hook to get you into here are the good things that'll come if you if you desist from crime and so then they get this shift in identity um so where they're not th that idea that they're now an ex-offender as opposed to a current offender and then they have to the end of that process is they have to maintain that positive identity uh, and gradually it decreases that desire for antisocial behavior so that's at some point they're like i don't even think about i don't even have the the urge to commit these crimes anymore and so that is when true desistance has happened. So it is not a, an instantaneous process. It is a gradual process uh, for somebody to truly desist from a criminal career. So um, life course theories in general, um, these are the much more integrated theories. Uh, they, they look at onset, um, continuance, and desistance. And so the factors that account for why somebody starts, why somebody continues their criminal career, and then finally why they desist. <clears throat> so there's a little fluffy there. Um, clearly a career criminal, just from that face. Uh, and so there are a lot of interconnected factors when we're looking at life course theories. And so there are um, personal factors, so things like personality and intelligence could play into it. Um, social factors, income, you know, your neighborhood, socialization factors, parenting experiences, um, marriage, cognitive factors, so information processing, the existence of cognitive distortions or not. And then also situational factors. So this would be things like opportunity, um, the amount of guardianship um, around an individual or in an area. Uh, and so life course theories sort of take all of these and say all of these play a role um, at various stages in people's lives. And, and it may look different um, at different stages of life, but they're, these, these roles are all, um, are all relevant to explain criminal behavior, especially lengthy criminal careers. Uh, so age-graded theory is a specific theory um, within the life course domain. Um, this was Samson and Lobb um, in 1993, and there they are. Um, and you can tell by um, Robert Samson's um, ASC uh, little um, name tag there that he's wearing that this was at the American Society, American Society of Criminology, um, one of the annual conferences. Um, I have several of those in my office actually hanging up behind me. Um, so this is so Samson and Lobb came up with the age-graded theory. Um, and basically they talked about the fact that there were various pathways to crime. Um, and so and people have talked about that and that's, that's something that's been uh, well-researched, but they wanted to know about pathways back to conformity. 
<clears throat> and so they were wondering, well, if, be, if, there, if we agree that there are various pathways for people to end up in the criminal lifestyle, then there has to be various ways to get out of it. And um, so they then talked about trajectories, transitions, and turning points. So trajectories um, are basically you are you know, you're on various different pathways um, and um, and these can lead to various different transitions. So um, important life events then can produce the transitions and um, then change the direction of a life course trajectory. So the trajectory is the overall what pathway are you on? The transition is something that happens that can change um, you know, what, tra what um, trajectory you're on. It can change the direction of your trajectory. And then the turning point itself is when somebody decides to turn and go on a different trajectory. So not all transitions will change the trajectory in a really significant way, um, but some transitions will make, create, or help create that turning point. And so both transitions and trajectories can be either positive or negative with positive or negative effects on the life course and on behavior. And so something else that they talked about within the age graded theory was the importance of social capital. And social capital is basically positive relationships with individuals or institutions. And so this very much influences the trajectory of a criminal career um, because building this social capital supports conventional behavior, which then inhibits deviant behavior. And so it could be things like uh, marriage, a career, military service, anything where um, the social capital is, is growing, you're gaining these positive, and by definition, they are positive relationships. Um, and it could be with, you know, individuals, so that would be something like marriage, but it could also be at the institutional level. So, um, you know, you get a new job, or, or you start, start to serve in the military, that's, that's, that's gaining positive social capital, specifically with institutions, whether it's, you know, your careers in education, then you're gaining um, social capital in the educational institution, or anything in the business at anywhere else. So, but anytime you're gaining this positive relationships, then that's building social capital, which the more of that that you build, the more that's going to inhibit deviance and sort of lead somebody onto the path to desistance if they are not already on it. <clears throat> now, Samson and Lobb said that marriage was um, sort of the most important thing um, in terms of increasing the likelihood of maturing out of crime. So, but they specified it's a successful marriage, uh, but a successful marriage, and especially when there's kids involved, majorly increases um, the likelihood of that desistance. And it's because this is because marriage provides structure, um, it decreases opportunities because you can't, you know, be out with the, the boys or whatever who are going to be getting into trouble. Um, you can't be out socializing with delinquent peers as much. Um, it gives a sense of belonging and responsibility because now you are part of a family and they depend on you. Um, it's also related, though, to the general aging and slowing down process because typically um, people get married once they're starting to already become mature. Um, not always, but um, typically. And so it is related to that typically, um, because we know as people age, they're far less likely to commit crime, to age out of crime. Um, but I mean, then this begs the question, well, does marriage increase desistance or does a criminal decide he wants to change his life and then both desistance and marriage are part of that plan? And that's difficult to tease apart, but it is still the case that marriage um, is very much linked to desistance. 